Welcome to Selections from the Hindu Scripture, Bhagavad Gita, Chapters 11 to 13, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. Hinduism is believed to be one of the oldest living religions on earth, with origins tracing back to the ancient Vedic civilization in India. With its deep spiritual roots, Hinduism is a vastly diverse and colorful religion. One of the most cherished values of Hinduism is Ahimsa or non-violence. A Hindu practitioner is mindful of this spiritual principle in all aspects of everyday life. An example of Ahimsa is honoring the lives of all beings through a vegan diet. Of the many sacred Hindu texts that have been written since ancient times, the Bhagavad Gita is among the most famous. This 700-verse scripture is part of the epic poem Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita focuses on a spiritually insightful dialogue between Prince Arjuna vegetarian and his guide Lord Sri Krishna vegetarian. Let us continue with excerpts from chapter 13, The Discrimination of the Kshetra and the Kshetragnya from the Holy Scripture Bhagavad Gita which has been translated into English by Swami Swarupananda. Chapter 13 The Discrimination of the Kshetra and the Kshetragnya Arjuna said, Prakriti, material nature, and Purusha, the individual soul, also the Kshetra, the field of activities, and the knower of the Kshetra, knowledge and that which ought to be known. These, O Keshava, Sri Krishna, I desire to learn. The Blessed Lord Sri Krishna said, This body, O son of Kunti, is called Kshetra, the field of activities, and he who knows it is called Kshetragnya, the knower of the field, by those who know of them, Kshetra and Kshetragnya. Me do thou also know, O descendant of Bharata, to be Kshetragnya, the knower of the field, in all Kshetras, fields of activities. The knowledge of Kshetra, the field of activities, and Kshetragnya, the knower of the field, is considered by me to be the knowledge. What the Kshetra, the field of activities, is, what its properties are, what are its modifications, what effects arise from what causes, and also, who he is and what his powers are that hear from me in brief. This truth has been sung by rishis in many ways, in various distinctive chants, in passages indicative of Brahman, full of reasoning and convincing. The great elements, egoism, intellect, as also the unmanifested mula prakriti, the ten senses and the one mind, and the five objects of the senses, desire, hatred, pleasure, pain, intelligence, fortitude, the kshetra, the field of activities, has been thus briefly described with its modifications. Humility, unpretentiousness, non-injury, forbearance, uprightness, service to the teacher, purity, steadiness, self-control, the renunciation of sense objects and also absence of egoism, reflection on the evils of birth, death, old age, sickness, and pain, non-attachment, non-identification of self with son, wife, home, and the rest, and constant even-mindedness in the occurrence of the desirable and the undesirable unswerving devotion to me by the yoga of non-separation, resort to sequestered places, distaste for the society of men, constant application to spiritual knowledge, understanding of the end of true knowledge. This is declared to be knowledge, and what is opposed to it is ignorance. Arjuna 
I shall describe that which has to be known, knowing which one attains to immortality, the beginningless supreme Brahman. It is called neither being nor non-being. With hands and feet everywhere, with eyes, heads and mouths everywhere, with ears everywhere in the universe, that exists pervading all, shining by the functions of all the senses, yet without the senses, absolute, yet sustaining all, devoid of gunas, sense objects, yet their experiencer, without and within all beings, the unmoving and also the moving, because of its subtlety, incomprehensible, it is far and near, impartible, yet it exists as if divided in beings. It is to be known as sustaining beings and devouring as well as generating them. The light even of lights, it is said to be beyond darkness, knowledge, and the one thing to be known, the goal of knowledge, dwelling in the hearts of all. Thus, Kshetra, the field of activities, knowledge, and that which has to be known, have been briefly stated. Knowing this, my devotee is fitted for my state. Know thou that Prakriti, material nature, and Purusha, the individual soul, are both beginningless. And know thou also that all modifications and gunas, sense objects, are born of Prakriti, material nature. In the production of the body and the senses, prakriti, material nature, is said to be the cause. In the experience of pleasure and pain, purusha, the individual soul, is said to be the cause. Purusha, the individual soul seated in prakriti, material nature, experiences the gunas, sense objects born of prakriti, material nature. The reason of his birth in good and evil wombs is his attachment to the gunas, sense objects. And the Supreme Purusha, the individual soul in this body, is also called the looker-on, the permitter, the supporter, the experiencer, the great Lord, and the highest self. He who thus knows the Purusha, the individual soul, and Prakriti, material nature, together with the Gunas, sense objects, whatever his life is not born again. Some by meditation behold the self in their own intelligence by the purified heart, others by the path of knowledge, others again by karma yoga, others again not knowing thus, worship as they have heard from others. Even these go beyond death regarding what they have heard as the supreme refuge. Whatever being is born, the moving or the unmoving, O bull of the Bharatas, know it to be from the union of Kshetra, the field of activities, and Kshetragnya, the knower of the field. He sees who sees the Lord Supreme, existing equally in all beings, deathless in the dying. Since seeing the Lord equally existent everywhere, he injures not self by self, and so goes to the highest goal. He sees who sees that all actions are done by prakriti, material nature, alone, and that the self is actionless. When he sees the separate existence of all beings inherent in the One and their expansion from that One alone, he then becomes Brahman. Being without beginning and devoid of gunas, sense objects, this Supreme Self, immutable, O son of Kunti, though existing in the body, neither acts nor is affected, as the all-pervading Akasha, space, because of its subtlety, is not tainted, so the Self existent in the body everywhere is not tainted. As the one sun illumines all this world, so does he who abides in the Kshetra, the field of activities, O descendant of Bharata, illumine the whole Kshetra. They who thus with the eye of knowledge perceive the distinction between the Kshetra, the field of activities, and the Kshetragnya, the knower of the field, and also the emancipation from the Prakriti, material nature of beings, they go to the Supreme. The end of the 13th chapter designated the discrimination of the Kshetra and the Kshetragnya. For more information, please visit Internet Sacred Text Archive, sacred-texts.com. If we each had to butcher our own meat, 
there would be a great increase in the number of vegetarians. Ernest Howard Crosby Vegetarian Amiable viewers, it was a delight that you could join us for Words of Wisdom 